So our next speaker will be uh, Kalina Jasinska. And she's going to tell us about log time and log space extreme classification. Uh, hi, it's great to be here. And uh, this is a joint work with Nikos Karampatsiakis. Okay, uh, so in extreme classification, uh, the problems uh, we consider uh, are characterized by uh, a lot of labels, long tail of labels, lo uh, missing or incorrect labels, or a lot of sparse features. Therefore, the complexity of uh, extreme classification algorithms is an important issue. Uh, in our work, we want to focus on reducing the time and space complexity with respect to the number of labels. More precisely, our goal is to devise an algorithm that requires little time, little space, can use various underlying classifiers, and is trained online. Uh, so, the idea behind littles uh, is to transform a multi labor or multi class classification algorithm uh, multi, uh, problem to a structured prediction problem. Uh, this way, we enable efficient inference and make the model small. To do so, we built a trellis, as you see on the slide, similar to, the one, to this one. Uh, on this trellis, there are steps like this. In each step, uh, there are two states. Uh, and there is, the number of steps is uh, log of m. Uh, now, each label is assigned to a single path in this, in this graph. Uh, of course, a path from, uh, from root to sync. Uh, a path can be represented as a vector of zeros and ones of length e, where e is the number of edges. Uh, by now, we can only represent pr problems uh, where the number of labels is a power of two. Uh, but uh, it is not true for, for other problems. So uh, to account for, prob for situations where the number of labels is not a power of two, we add some additional so-called skip edges. Uh, the places where we add those skip edges uh, are determined uh, by the uh, binary representation of the number of labels. Okay, uh, the number of labels uh, is, uh, can be upper bounded with uh, the formula you can see, uh, and the number of labels is, uh, sorry, number of edges uh, is the thing that really matters since uh, this is the edge that corresponds to a function we learn. So uh, the number of edges uh, influences uh, the number, uh, the size of our model. Uh, all M uh, paths uh, can stacked vertically form a matrix G. So the blue uh, path you can see on the graph corresponds to the highlighted column. Of course, in this situation, the number of, of edges uh, is bigger than the number of labels. Uh, but if the number of, uh, of labels is bigger, uh, the opposite is true. So that now we need to use less edges than labels. One can look at this model, as li at littles, as a low rank model. Uh, it learns the representation in the space of the edges and then transforms it to the labels, to the to, to space, uh, to, to to labels using matrix G. Uh, to do inference, we need only to find highest values in y hat, and this can be done efficiently uh, thanks to the fact that the decompression matrix G has a fixed structure. So, how to do it? As I've said. Uh, each edge corresponds to a function we learn. Uh, this function, given some features, returns a weight or the length of the corresponding edge. And the score of a, of a label is the length of the correspond or a weighted length or of a corresponding path. Uh, Littles predicts uh, the label corresponding to the longest path 
or to k or labels corresponding to k longest paths. Uh, those can be found efficiently using dynamic programming. Uh, okay. Uh, functions returning uh, those uh, ways of edges uh, are trained online. We, we have used uh, a separation ranking loss, as in the PD Sparge paper. Uh, to evaluate this loss, we need to find uh, the longest negative path and the shortest positive. Uh, they are in red and, and green. Uh, both these paths can be found efficiently using littles. Uh, if the loss is uh, greater than zero, uh, we have to update some edges, but not all of them. Uh, more precisely, we have to update uh, models corresponding to edges that are on the longest negative path, but are not on the shortest positive, and other way around. In this situation, we would have to update uh, th those will not be updated. The only green will be updated according to the gradient, and those opposite. Um, okay, so, so let me just briefly uh, comment on our results. Uh, we applied the experimental setting from uh, the paper about PD sparse. More precisely, we, we use the same data sets. Uh, we report metrics such as precision at K, prediction time, and model size. Uh, in, our, in this results, we use littles uh, with a linear model uh, regression for predicting the edge weights. Uh, so the, mod the, size, uh, the model size of littles is very restricted, uh, unlike in case of our competitors. Uh, to make the, comp the comparison better, uh, we also um, have checked results of a simple baseline algorithm of the same size. We have uh, learned a logistic regression classifier for each of the most frequent labels. It is as many edges we, we have. Uh, so, in, on this plot, oh, uh, Littles is green and uh, the baseline is, is in black. Um, as you can see, we, are, we nearly always beat the baseline and we are close to our competitors. Uh, when it comes to model size, uh, we compare it with, with FastXML, and uh, Littles is much smaller. Of course, it is much faster, even in Python. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, just I briefly comment where, when Littles is okay and where not. Uh, Littles achieves good results on data sets with many and sparse features. The results are not as good if the features are dense, but this effect can be uh, compensated by using a more complex model to predict edge weights, for example, a net neural network. And some open challenges. Uh, in this kind of models, the, the way we assign labels to paths is a very important issue. Uh, we applied a simple heuristic making use of the fact that uh, we can produce a ranking efficiently, but it can be improved. Uh, other um, challenges is to show the relationship between the relation with, uh, between littles and label trees, or to check uh, the results of littles with various underlying structures to establish the performance, the trade-off between predictive performance and model size. Okay, so here's a paper and the code. Uh, thank you for your attention. We have time for a few questions. So, do you have any uh, sense of the trade off in creating the lattice? How do you assign labels to tasks and lattices? Are there different approaches that you can take to actually lead to results? 
Uh, yeah, we have uh, tried to with uh, various approaches of uh, label pass assignment. Uh, we have used a simple heuristic making use of the fact that we can produce this ranking efficiently. So that we, uh, if we encounter a new label, uh, we create a ranking of paths, and if there is not yet a not yet assigned path, we assign this, uh, this new label to this path. Otherwise, we put a random one. And this improves the res results significantly over a completely random assignment. Uh, what's more? Um, we have uh, tried with uh, some other approaches, like using serviation or uh, and other things, but they are more complex. Uh, they require more, more, more computation, and we want it to keep it uh, simple and fast. So I have a, actually a second question related, which is uh, a, a bit you looked at, connect, at possible connections with uh, um, error correcting codes uh, and connection to especially the user um, error correcting output codes that people have used for large label sets in the past. Mm. Of course, there is some, uh, but in ECOC, it is hard to make the fast inference. But, yeah, okay. we can talk offline. Any other question? Yes, John. So I was wondering if you had thought about online learning of the structure itself, where uh, you, you, you you're just running through, you see a label, and then you have uh, just you initialize some edges, just the beginning edges, uh, beginning two edges probably, and then you see another label, and maybe you go the other way. But then you see a third label, and you're like, okay, I need another le level of depth. And then you see a fourth, and then a fifth, and then you're like, oh, I need another level. You just keep on adding levels as you see more and more things. I was, it's a good question because we're thinking how to do it, uh, but it, it wasn't that clear. Uh, so, uh, it's a thing that we, exactly, we, we should do. Okay, okay let's uh, thank the speaker again.